Hello all, myself Janil. Let us begin new chapter soil classification. In this chapter, we are going to classify the soil. I mean different types of soils with, with proper classification, different classes of soils will be classified in this chapter. Let us begin this. Purposes of classification. So what are the purposes? Why we are classifying the soil? What is the need for classifying the soil? Without classifying, cannot we work? We can, but the classification is necessary due to these reasons. Let us understand them. First, to arrange various types of soil into groups according to their engineering properties. So basically, we are grouping different types of soils into one group so that Similar engineering properties can be identified by the groups only. This is the first necessity. Second one, to decide suitability of soil as a construction material. So, to decide suitability, if the soil is suiting your building or not, to decide that we have to classify the soil and for using soil as a construction material for earthwork for an example if it is a, a excavated uh, hole in that if we want to add some soil or we want to do earthwork somewhere we need to classify the soil and then we can use there any soil will not work at any places and the third point suggests to decide the suitability of soil for the foundation of structures it is very important foundation of structures are very crucial part of the building because if the foundation are weak then the building cannot survive so for foundation of structures suitability of foundation of structures we need to classify the soil moving forward to provide a common understanding among different geotechnical engineers of different areas so for an example let me say that I am a geotechnical engineering from engineer from Ahmedabad if someone coming from a different city like Calcutta or let us say New York or Mumbai they must be knowing the basics but they are telling that the soil is red and I am telling the soil is maroon so both are viewing the same soil but the perception of both of us are different to change that and to uh, remove the clashes to prevent the clashes to uh, provide a common understanding between among all geotechnical engineers you have to classify the soil so these are basic purposes of soil classification after that we need to learn field identification tests so when you go on the field you do not have machines with you so you have to identify the soil with your eyes and with your senses only for that you need to use these knowledge for primary identification after spreading the sample you have to spread the sample somewhere and you have to observe it with the naked eyes if lesser than 50 percentage of soil is visible then it is a fine grained soil and if more than 50 percentage of soil is visible then it is a coarse grained soil so you should be able to decide on field if it is fgs or cgs by spreading the sample and viewing it by the naked eyes after that secondary identification starts this was primary identification primarily you have to know that if it is a CGS or if it is a FGS after that you will do secondary identification for secondary identification if it is CGS if it is coarse grained soil then you are doing to going to do this process first you have to identify it if it is greater than 4.75 mm diameter then it will be a gravel now more than 50 percentage of uh, soil of CGS is greater than 4.75 mm dia 
then it will be a clearly gravel soil. Now, if it is in the range of 4.75 to 0.075 mm, then it will be a sand. And if it is a mixture of sand and silt, then you have to do dispersion test. Here you can see dispersion test. For dispersion test, after dispersion, particles settle in water. You have to take a glass of water and a transparent glass of water or glass uh, water. In that, you have to add some soil. After adding that, if that soil settles down in one minute or so, then it will be a sand. If it do not settle in one or two minutes, if it takes time more than 15 minutes, it will be a silt. So you can identify on the field if it is gravel, sand, silt or sand. Right. So that is how you can differentiate all these types. Moving to next secondary classification that is FGS for FGS. So when it is a fine grained soil, it will be a finer than coarse, right? So for that four tests are done. Basically, first test that is dilatancy test. In that, small pat is prepared. Small pat means a small uh, amount of soil should be taken in the hand. Now, after that, apply shaking and squeezing motion in the palm. Then, after that, you have to uh, shake and squeeze your hand in the horizontal manner so that the soil get mixed. Now, after that, the moisture of the soil will appear on your hand. After opening the hand, you will see the moisture of the soil coming outside or coming out of that soil. If the water appears and again disappears, then if it is happening quickly, it will be a quick reaction. It will be a quick reaction and if it happens slowly. For an example, if you open your palm and if you see that uh, the soil and water comes out and after one or two minutes it goes and disappears, then it will be a slow process and it is known as slow reaction. From quick reaction and slow reaction, you can tell the type of classify the soil. Second test, that is toughness test. Due to this, you can measure toughness of the soil. For toughness, threads from cohesive soil about 3 mm dia should be prepared. Uh, if you remember from plastic limit test, we have made a round thread of 3 mm dia, right? Same type of thread should be made. After that, if it can be prepared, then it must be a clay. And if it cannot be prepared, it will be a silt. So that is how you can decide if it is a clay or silt. So we have learned two tests, dilatancy test and toughness test. Let us move to the next test that is dry strength test. For dry strength test, you have to uh, again prepare a pad. Pad means nothing but amount of soil should be taken in your palm. Now, after dry pad, uh, preparing a pad which is dry, uh, before this dilatancy test requires a wet pad, right? So in that you add some water, but in this you did not have to uh, add any water. So I have taken some uh, soil in my hand, in my palm. Now I will provide a dry uh, pad with my fingers and palm, like this, like this. After that. Slight dry strength, if it is having some strength, if you feel that it is having some slight strength, then it will be a, uh, it will be uh, powdered, it will be uh, powdered with the finger only. When you provide a pet with the fingers only, it will get powdered. Then it will be having a slight dry strength. If it cannot be powdered with fingers, then it will be having a medium dry strength. Still, if it is not uh, powdered by fingers and if it is broken by pressure with the palm, 
if you provide pressure with the pump and then it is broken then it will be having a high dry strength and if it is not uh, getting broken with the pressure by the pump also then it should be having very high dry strength so this is how you can uh, analyze strength of the soil on the field only without any technical measures by your senses only fourth are uh, the miscellaneous we can say other tests first test uh, these tests other tests are uh, based on uh, feeling or uh, the feeling or gesture or texture of the soil let us see fine sand will be having texture like gritty feeling it will give some gritty feel right if it is uh, like uh, some grains in my hand it will be having a gritty feeling silt it will have a rough feeling it will have a, it will have some rough 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 feeling clay will have a smooth feeling if you touch a talcum powder in your home if you touch a talcum powder it will give a smooth feeling right so clay will give a smooth feel like that so field identification tests are performed like this uh, believe me these tests are very essential for engineers because these tests are performed by a uh, very uh, we can say layman the unstudied people or uh, unlearned people they also know this techniques and after them uh, sometimes it happens that the contractors will uh, feel the soil and tell the properties of that soil but engineers will fail to do that so you need to understand this and you need to remember field identification tests as they are very much important and useful in the field so let me complete this lecture here uh, we will meet in the next lecture thank you